Hey y'all, so are you looking for an effective way to write grants? I have something I wanna share with you. Let's get into this one. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help with your nonprofit, you should be subscribed to this channel because I talk about startup and fundraising from the ground up. And so today I wanted to focus on grant writing because that is a piece of your nonprofit startup journey. And it's a piece a lot of people misunderstand. So I wanted to share more about grant writing, but I specifically wanted to talk about grant writing and a new tool called chat GPT. Now I recognize that some of y'all watching this may have never heard of it. So what I'm going to do in this video is just share a little bit about what chat GPT is and three things you need to consider when you're using it to help you write grants. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share one piece of advice. I always like to leave you with some advice. So I hope you stay to the end because there's one piece of advice um, if you're going to use chat GPT that you should be aware of and that you should keep in mind if you're using it to write your grant proposals. And let me start by saying, I am not like an IT technical person, so my explanations for this stuff is gonna be really simplistic, but the goal of this is for you to at least know about it if you were never aware of it before, so you can do your research. But I'm gonna to try to explain it as much as I can, given the fact that I'm a social worker and I'm not an IT person, okay? So ChatGPT is actually one tool that uses artificial intelligence. And what it is, it's like a conversational app or a service where you sign up for the service and it talks to you. So you can give it what's called prompts. You can say, hey, give me a magazine article, 500 words in a conversational style or in a casual style, right? And it will do it for you. And ChatGPT, what it, how it works behind the scenes, it, it scours the internet. It looks at data that already exists on the internet and it compiles all that very quickly and pulls together what you ask based on what it learned from looking at data. And it's like the human brain times a billion, right? So it processes information very quickly and spits it back to you so you can use it for whatever purpose you asked for. So ChatGPT is just one service. There are other services, AI services. So when I say AI, I mean artificial intelligence. There are a lot of different AI services that are coming out right now that can help make you more productive in any kind of work that you do, right? So you can only imagine, like if you just give a prompt and you ask a question and it spits it right back to you, all the positive things and some negative things that may come out of that. And so in this video, I'm gonna share three considerations when you are specifically using a tool like ChatGPT to write your grant proposals. Now here's the thing, it is just one app and service. There is all kinds of apps and services that use AI, that use data from the internet to produce things for you. So there are AI tools that help you produce pictures and help you cut down on your videos and do editing. So what makes it so attractive to the average person is that it can do this very quickly. It can help speed up your production times. It can help you do things much quicker. All the time that you would have been doing yourself to do research, to figure out how to do something and figure it out, it does for you in literally seconds. So you can sign up for ChatGPT to try the service. It's one of the more popular ones, which is why I'm calling it out. But I'm gonna put a link down below where you can sign up for an account. It is free and you can check it out for yourself. You can give it a prompt, you can ask it to do something for you and it will spit it out for you. For example, um, you can give a prompt that says, give me 20 foundations that are located in this specific geographic area and it will shoot it back to you in a list. And you can use that as a way to start doing your grant research, all right? So I hope that was a good enough explanation. I hope if you had never heard of ChatGPT before, you at least got something out of it. And for y'all who know it very well, don't beat me up too bad because I just wanted to give a general explanation. Now, what does that mean for you when you are a new nonprofit founder or a small nonprofit and you need to be able to write grant proposals? How do you use ChatGPT to help you? So that's what I'm going to share for the rest of this video. I'm going to give you three considerations you need to be thinking about. 
First consideration, I just want to talk about how ChatGPT can help you literally write and draft full sections of your proposal. So if you ask ChatGPT to write out a problem statement for you, given a certain topic, so maybe your topic is teen pregnancy or unplanned pregnancy, and you want to ask it to give like statistics or talk about why it's such a problem, talk about the prevalence of teen pregnancy and write it in a proposal format, it can spit out text for you that you can use for your proposal. So there are certain sections that you're going to see in different grant applications, requests for proposals that are going to ask you to draft a narrative and you can actually give a prompt to chat GPT and it will shoot back a narrative to you. Now, I know some of y'all are listening like, oh, like there, there's a lot of controversy around this and I'm going to cover it later in this video. But I'm just giving you right now, just stick with me. I'm just giving you the capabilities first then you can do with it what you choose. But I'm telling you what is possible now. And then I'm going to continue to talk about the considerations even within the possibilities. So if you need help, like if you are a person who is not a strong writer or you struggle with organization and putting together a cohesive proposal, then you can use ChatGPT and give it prompts and it can help you draft the narrative, right? And this becomes so powerful because you can actually use it to edit, right? Or reframe or refocus your narrative. So even if you've already written something and you want to tighten it up or you want to change the stone, the tone or the style, you can ask ChatGPT to do that for you. Also, you can use it to help cut down, right? So what if you need to do something but you only have 500 characters or you can only use 200 words? It can help you edit in that way and it's, it can save you time so that you don't have to spend the time doing that for yourself. It's a really good tool to help you organize, especially for those people who, again, like I said, are not good writers or aren't really sure where to start with a proposal. So even if you don't use all of the text that you get from ChatGPT, you can start there. I don't know about you, but it's way easier for me to edit than it is to write from scratch. So if you have something to start with, you can edit it in your style and change it and finesse it and use it for whatever you need to use it for. But ChatGPT is a good place to start by the narrative that it spits back to you. And the other thing I really do want to mention, I know people may have concerns about this, but what I'm going to say is that for people who don't have the time or the resources to hire a grant writer, this is a game changer and it helps level the playing field. So people who, who can afford to hire a person to organize the process or write narratives or pull together a grant proposal, some, you know, some organizations that have the resources to do that, they have an unfair advantage compared to the other organizations that are smaller or newer who don't have that staff capacity, don't have staff at all to be able to do that. So ChatGPT can really level the playing field in certain ways, not always, but in certain ways, at least with the writing and the drafting of the narrative. So it can be a really powerful tool, especially for new and small nonprofits, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Because if you're afraid to get out there and start writing your first proposal, or you are just not a good writer, but you don't know what else to do because you can't hire anybody, you can use this tool to help you get started. If you need help crafting your first proposal, understanding what should go in the proposal, understanding how to organize that process for yourself, I do have a grant writing workbook. So you can literally take the questions that I have in my worksheets in my workbook and use ChatGPT to help you form your first proposal. If you're interested in using that workbook, check out the description box below. I'm linking it below so you can purchase it today. This is the second thing I want you to know about ChatGPT and grant writing. It is a really effective tool to help you delegate. It's a really effective tool to help you parse out the things that take a lot of time so that you can focus your time on the, the substantive stuff, the things that you really need to be focusing on, the things that require a lot of thought and subjectivity. So the activities that you don't have time to spend on but are necessary that may take a lot of time, like doing research, compiling lists, you know, starting drafts and things like that, you can use ChatGPT as a tool to do that. 
And if you have help, say you have an intern or say you have like an assistant working with you who may not really understand the substance of your work, but they can help you administratively and help prepare some things for you, they can use ChatGPT as a tool to do that for you. So the example that I used in the beginning was creating a list of local foundations, right? If you don't know where to start with finding local foundations and you don't have the time to pull together that list, you can use your assistant and have that person start populating that list from ChatGPT, and then they can start filling out a spreadsheet for you. You can track it and you can start there. Now there are other ways you can find grant opportunities. Don't, don't think that I'm saying ChatGPT is the only way to find opportunities for free, right? But it is a tool you can use to help narrow down your search or help you refine like what you want to focus on. Here's the other thing that relates to what I just talked about. You can use an assistant to help stand up your proposal. What do I mean by that? They can create the structure of a proposal for you and they can use ChatGPT to get started. So what if you need to create an executive summary and you don't know how to frame it or what sentences to use and your assistant is doing that for you, but they don't know how to write a grant. They can use ChatGPT, ask it to write an executive summary and at least have the structure of it so you can go in later and do your edits and add more detailed information that are specific to your program. The same could go for how you talk about your program activities. It can help you figure out the right structure and how to format it so you can give that and delegate that to somebody like an assistant and then when you come back around you can fill in and put in the specifics you could also get your board engaged right because so sometimes your board the reason why they don't help is because you know they'll say I don't know how to do that I've never written a grant I don't know what to do but you can also get them involved and have them do things like that like stand up your proposal or put a structure in place for the people who are closer to the work and know the more detailed stuff can go in after them and review so you can use chat GPT as a tool to help you delegate as a tool to help you figure out what activities can be parsed out to other people so you have the time as a founder or as the executive director to do the more substantive work. Here's the third thing I want you to know about ChatGPT. Everyone is not a fan. And I alluded to this earlier, but I do also want you to know about all sides of ChatGPT. So, and there's multiple ways you can look at this. The first way you can look at this is that some people, especially grant writers, don't like the fact that people can basically use language, put it in their grant proposals and submit. It's kind of like a slap in the face to people who take their time, who are old school and say, I'm going to write my own narrative <laughs> right, and submit it. It's kind of a slap in the face to them for the work they put in to create compelling narratives. And I can understand that from a professional point of view. I'm a professional. I take time to develop my skill set and somebody can just come in and just put a prompt in and get something that takes me hours to work on. I completely get it. And honestly, I don't have a strong opinion either way because I do feel like there are some people who could never afford a grant writer and they cannot get to the place they need to until they're able to write substantial grants, right? If grants is the pathway that they need to get money for their organization. And so we could get stuck in this philosophical argument about whether it's right or whether it's plagiarism or whatever. But the reality is people right now need the help and they can't afford it. So what else are they supposed to do? <laughs> so like you can have your philosophical arguments, but let's be pragmatic and real about the fact that there are organizations that can really use this tool to be able to survive and help them like leverage tools out there that can help them get the money that they need. And so I, I feel like that you can't ignore that in that argument. And I'm not mad at the grant writers for being upset that, you know, it's a tool that kind of is like a slap in the face to their their profession. But I also think that we have to be real and understand that there's a lot to go around for as many organizations that use ChatGPT for organizing their grant proposals. There's just as many that still need grant writers because there's so much more to submitting a grant proposal than coming up with a narrative. Like you still have to organize the process. Like you still have to manage the process of pulling everything together. You still have to figure out the submission process because every grant funder has a different submission process, right? You still have to think about, you know, the, the structure of it all. Like how are we going to approach this grant proposal? What program are we going to use it for? How are we going to use a grant, 
right, to help build up our organization? How does it fit into our strategic plan? Those kind of conversations, chat GPT can't do for you. But a grant writer can, like a grant writer can help you think through that, think holistically. So I don't necessarily think that chat GPT is a replacement for a grant writer. So I think like there's danger in people like bickering about you shouldn't be using it because you should just pay for a grant writer. But I feel like that's not the point. Like use it as the tool it's supposed to be used for to help level the playing field. And then when it's time for you to, to have an actual human, and use human interaction. That's what the grant writing profession is for. Here's the other side of it too though. As much as I hear about ChatGPT, I fully acknowledge that it's because I am a business owner and I am attached to networks that talk about how to leverage business tools or how to do marketing tools. So I'm always looking at that kind of stuff. I have colleagues and friends who talk about business and marketing tools. So I naturally hear about this kind of stuff, but not everybody does. I don't know what the percentage is, but I would guess that there's still a large percentage of the general public that have no idea what AI is, have never heard of ChatGPT and will never be exposed to it. And I think that's the other danger that people are not realizing the power of AI and they're not understanding how it's impacting their lives. And they may not understand that they can use and leverage this tool to help get ahead. And there are other organizations that know about it and are using it to become more productive and to become more efficient. And there are other people who don't know about it who are going to get left behind. Now, some of y'all may say, well, that's just what it is. It's survival of the fittest. Okay, that's a little hardcore. Okay. <laughs> but I do worry about that, that um, like some people, because they don't know about AI or they're, you know, they're a little nervous about technology and, and don't really want to understand it because it seems confusing to them. I do worry about just because those people don't have the skill sets, they're going to get passed by, right? Like we're going to get so sophisticated about using certain tools and the certain, certain organizations are gonna be left in the dust. And because they don't understand the technology, because they don't have access, do they deserve to be left behind? That's the question. That's a really, really tough question. Because on one hand, you can say, well, you know, that's what having a business is. You gotta be able to evolve. You gotta be able to know the times. But on the other side, you can say, well, the times are moving so fast and it's confusing. How can we keep up? So I just, I wanna throw that out there as the third thing to know, like the, the jury is still out on like, is this really a good tool or is this gonna destroy humankind? <laughs> Not just chat GPT, but just AI in general. There's so much technology that even I don't know about um, that's happening right now and how they're using AI and how they're using AI to replace human tasks it can be a little scary when you think about it. So I just want to throw that out there that like it's bigger than chat GPT and just keep your eyes open, your ears open for how to use it, but also the potential dangers and just be prepared. So, you know, I always got to give my piece of advice. This is my piece of advice coming back to the grant writing topic. OK, there's no amount of technology that's ever going to replace human interaction and human relationship. And what you have to understand about winning grants and being successful, having a successful grant writing strategy, relationships has to be a major part of that strategy. You have to learn how to develop relationships with foundations, figure out what your alignments are with your grant funders, meet your program officers or the people who manage your portfolios, talk to them, share impact, there's still people who are going to be making decisions, so you still need to interface with people. Proposals are a key part of the grant writing process, but they are not the only part. And so you always have to remember, you can't forsake human interaction just because you have a tool that makes you more efficient or makes you more productive. And never lose sight of the fact that relationships matter in any kind of fundraising. If you watch any of my fundraising videos, if you watch my grant writing masterclass, which I'm also linking below, I focus on relationship building and grant writing because that is more successful. That's going to be long term more successful for you than just chasing from, you know, going from proposal to proposal. And I'm never going to get off of that. 
Like you cannot forsake human interaction, relationship. These are decisions that humans are making when they decide to fund you. So they're not just looking at words on a paper. They're looking at your credibility in the community. They're looking at what you're actually doing, your partnerships. They're looking at the design of your program. They're looking at like the impact. What are your successful outcomes from your programs? That stuff still matters. And chat GPT can't make that up for you. And I would not suggest you lie <laughs> or let it make it up for you. So that's just one thing I just really want to throw out there that remember that when you're writing grants, it's so much more than the written portion of it. So don't forget that. All right. So if you need help with your nonprofit, if you need help with fundraising and setting up your first board, if you need help with grant writing, I have resources on my website that can assist you. You can go to bossinabudget.com and check me out there. Also, I do provide consultations. I get that question a lot. So just want to let you guys know I'll have links to that below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.